Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is a very important issue being talked about here at the Blood Cancer in the Elderly meeting in Rome. Uh, Pierluigi Cinzani from Bologna, you are one of the speakers at, at a big session here, and uh, uh, Professor Bertrand Coiffier, you're also at the same session. Um, and I know that diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma are, are, are big topics. Can we start with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma? With respect to older patients, what are the issues there? The problem in diffuse large cell lymphoma is that it is a curable disease. And to cure a patient, you, uh, the standard for the moment is hardship, even if it's not sufficient in all patients. The problem for elderly patients, if we speak about, uh, is uh, for patients above 70 or uh, above 80, that they have a lot of other diseases and uh, oh, it's difficult in some of them to use the full dose of hardship so the, the problem is what type of treatment to use and uh, have, what is the objective of the treatment, to cure or just to palliate, to have a long survival. What have cancer doctors been doing and what should they be doing? They are considering that these elderly patients are too old to be treated for cure. It's not good. They should go for cure in this patient and they may succeed to cure them so they may have 10, 15, 20 years more to. Pierre Luigi. Yeah, I think the biggest problem is uh, to, to try to, to prolong the survival with a good quality of life. And uh, for diffuse abyssal lymphoma, uh, all, all of you know that uh, the, the gold standard uh, that uh, Bertrand said before is CHOP plus rituximab. Uh, the real problem is uh, the second line with when there is a relapse. And in this case, we are, we are looking right now in the, in the last three, four years for new, new, new treatment, new target drugs uh, with a low profile in terms of toxicity and uh, with a good activity in terms of uh, elderly patients' treatment. From among your elderly patients, how many of them, and indeed which patients, can you treat with curative intent? And also by the performance status of the patients. And, uh, and so there are, uh, at this time, several uh, particular scores in terms of uh, geriatric score in this case. Or you can divide the patient fit and unfit patient for the treatment. And uh, because the most part of patients with an, an age more than 70 or 75 are uh, with uh, several comorbidities, so it's sometimes so difficult. But uh, uh, in clinical trials, no more than 20, 30 percent of the patient can uh, be treated with a new treatment. But uh, uh, the problem is that the, the daily uh, treatment of the patients, so this is a real problem. And how do you recognize the patients who are good for treatment then? Yes, yes and no. It's, uh, it's easy when you, uh, to recognize patients if, uh, uh, if you have seen a lot of them, but there is no definitive characteristic. What about comorbidities? Uh, you know, the best way to say is the standard is our shop. Is what, are, what might be the reason for this patient not to get the standard? And uh, so there is, uh, we recognize those contraindication to the full dose arch. And it's the CHOP that may cause the toxicity? Yes, uh, yes, because uh, in, there are two reasons for that. It's uh, the doxorubicin that has some cardiac toxicity, and some of these patients have already cardiac problem. And the other is that uh, uh, you observe at the arch of, particularly in elderly, some neutropenia and infection related to neutropenia more frequently than in young patients. Can I ask both of you, though, about follicular lymphoma? Because there have been a number of developments there, some of them quite encouraging. What is the, the problem or what are the issues with treating older patients with follicular lymphoma? So if you consider the follicular lymphoma in comparison with diffuse abyssal lymphoma, it's uh, so difficult to, to cure this kind of, uh, of subset of patients with lymphoma. You can try to cure no more than 15-20% uh, of the patient because it's a real indolent disease. So you can, you can, you can obtain a, a good uh, complete response, but uh, uh, 
in the most part of the patients there is a first relapse and then you can have another treatment and then another second relapse and so on. I think it's very important uh, not to try to cure the, the patient but to, to, to have a, a good quality of the life for, with a long survival of the patient. So in this case it's very important for follicular lymphoma with an age more than 60, 65 or 70 uh, to have a new drug in terms also of uh, maintains, maintains the response in, during the time with a low toxicity. And again, can you um, select patients on the basis of, of age? Sorry. Yes, in follicular lymphoma, the first question for a physician seeing this patient is, should I treat this patient? Because watch and wait is particularly interesting in this population of elderly patients. So in the first question is, should I begin a treatment or not? And then the second is, which type of treatment? And the tribe to have a good quality of life. What are the improvements recently that are relevant to patients who are older with follicular lymphoma? Uh, recently, you, in follicular lymphoma, the, the improvement we have made is the uh, introduction of maintenance therapy with rituximab alone for uh, two years or more. It's, I'm not sure this is a problem for elderly patients. Because here, the, it's not to treat, to have a long, uh, but uh, it's how to, uh, what is the best way for the patient to continue to uh, have a good life, a good quality of life, and to live longer than uh, treating, not treating, and if you treat, probably with low toxicity drugs like rituximab or the targeted drug. So coming out of this conference here in Rome, what would both of you suggest are the practical messages, the ideas that doctors could take home and, and use to treat their patients more appropriately who are older? There are two messages, one for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The physician has to go for a cure and what are the reasons not to use our shop and for follicular lymphoma, the physician has to go for no cure and uh, no treatment is, uh, in, is the majority of the patient is the best way to use it. To do yeah, it. because sometimes in, uh, in follicular lymphoma, uh, in elderly patients with follicular lymphoma, it's better uh, don't treat the patient that uh, treat the patient. This is very important. And uh, washing weight can be important, but at the same time, this particular subset of patient, I think, is important. The new drug, the new target drug, like lenalidomide, like bortezomib, with a different mechanism of action, with a good quality of a response, uh, with a low profile in terms of toxicity. So do you think some of these more gentle treatments, or potentially more gentle treatments, will work? <laughs> yes, for the, so. uh, was the aim. The aim of a patient with 75 years old with follicular lymphoma is uh, to give to this patient 10 years without any problems. So uh, it's sufficient. these new drugs are sufficient to do that. It will not cure a patient. So a patient 50 years old, it's insufficient. But at its age, it's okay. In, an example is uh, that uh, until 10 years ago, we didn't treat patients with an age more than 70, 75. Now we are treating patients also with an age more than 80, for example. And finally, how important do you think is it to regard older patients with blood cancers as a separate group that needs to be specialised in? The problem of uh, elderly patients is uh, that uh, they have a lot of other diseases, uh, sometimes very important, and uh, so we have to take into account these other concomitant diseases before doing the treatment. And, but we have to treat like a young patient. Uh, the, the end point is to treat like a, a, a young patient, but I think it's very important, a good collaboration with all other colleagues in uh, internal medicine for this particular patient with, uh, uh, with an age more than 70, 75, concerning the comorbidities and I think in the future it will be very important to have some guideline concerning uh, to stratify the patient according to this particular uh, comorbidities and to have a different treatment according to the different situations. Of Pierluigi and Bertrand, thank you for joining me on eCancer TV. Thank, thank you. you, pleasure. <laughs>